The Black-Eyed Children The Unusual Encounter It was a chilly autumn evening when Sarah first encountered the black-eyed children. The sun had just set, casting long shadows across the neighborhood. Sarah, a young woman in her late twenties, was walking her dog when she noticed two children standing at the end of her driveway. They were unusually still, their heads bowed slightly. As she approached, her dog started to growl, an uncommon behavior for her normally friendly pet. The request. The children looked up simultaneously, their eyes dark and devoid of any whites. A cold shiver ran down Sarah's spine. The taller of the two, a boy, spoke in a monotone voice. We need to use your phone. Despite the oddity of the situation, Sarah felt an inexplicable urge to help them. She found herself nodding, unable to form words. The warning. As she led the children towards her front door, a neighbor, Mr. Thompson, stepped outside. He was an elderly man known for his eccentric stories. He called out urgently. Don't let them in. They're not what they seem. His voice was filled with genuine fear. Sarah hesitated, but the children's gaze was now fixed on her, compelling her to continue. Inside the house. Once inside, the atmosphere grew heavy. The children stood in the hallway, not moving, not speaking. Sarah handed them her phone, and the girl began to dial. Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. The dog's growl had turned into a low whimper, and it cowered behind the couch. The call. The girl held the phone to her ear, but there was no dial tone. She didn't seem to notice. Instead, she began speaking in a language Sarah couldn't understand. The boy watched her with those unnerving black eyes, his expression blank. Sarah felt a growing sense of dread, but she was rooted to the spot, unable to act. The Realization As the girl continued to speak, Sarah noticed a change in the room's temperature. It had dropped several degrees. The lights flickered, and the shadows seemed to grow longer. Sarah's phone, which the girl was still holding, suddenly emitted a high-pitched noise causing the girl to drop it. The revelation. Mr. Thompson's warning echoed in Sarah's mind. She finally mustered the strength to move, taking a step back. What do you want? She demanded, her voice shaking. The children turned their gaze to her, and the boy spoke again. We need to use your phone. The repetition was unnerving, and Sarah realized they were not human. The escape. Sarah's survival instinct kicked in. She backed away slowly then turned and ran to the kitchen, grabbing a knife from the drawer. The children didn't follow but continued to stand there, watching. She could hear their voices in her head, a cacophony of whispers that made her head ache. The neighbors. Desperate, Sarah ran out the back door to Mr. Thompson's house. She banged on the door, and he quickly let her in. I told you not to let them in. He scolded, but his tone was more worried than angry. What are they? Sarah asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Old spirits, he replied. They take on the form of children to trick people. The explanation. Mr. Thompson explained that the black-eyed children were entities that fed on fear and life force. They could only enter a home if invited. You must get them out, he urged. But how? Sarah asked, feeling hopeless. You must refuse them, show no fear. He advised, though it was clear he knew how difficult that would be. The confrontation. Armed with new resolve, Sarah returned to her house. The children were still there, standing in the hallway. She took a deep breath and said firmly, You need to leave. Now. The children looked at her, and for a moment she felt a wave of fear. But she stood her ground. The departure. The boy and girl exchanged glances, their expressions still blank. Slowly, they turned and walked towards the door. Sarah followed, ensuring they left the house. As they stepped outside, they looked back one last time, their eyes reflecting an unnatural darkness. We'll be back, the boy whispered before they disappeared into the night. The aftermath. With the children gone, the house felt lighter, the oppressive atmosphere lifting. Sarah slumped to the floor, exhausted. The dog came out from its hiding place wagging its tail cautiously. She knew the danger wasn't completely over, but for now, they were safe. The Research 
Determined to understand more, Sarah spent the next few days researching the black-eyed children. She found numerous accounts similar to hers, stories of encounters that ended in fear and confusion. But there was little information on how to permanently get rid of them. The preparations. Sarah decided to prepare for their return. She consulted with Mr. Thompson and other locals who had knowledge of the supernatural. They provided her with protective charms and taught her rituals to ward off evil spirits. Her house became a fortress, filled with symbols and objects meant to repel the entities. The signs. Weeks passed, and Sarah began to notice subtle signs of the children's presence. Shadows moving in the corners of her vision, whispers in the wind, and the feeling of being watched. She kept her guard up, knowing it was only a matter of time before they returned. The return. One stormy night, there was a knock at the door. Sarah's heart raced, but she steeled herself. She peeked through the window and saw the familiar faces of the black-eyed children. This time, she was ready. You can't come in, she said loudly, her voice firm and unwavering. The standoff. The children stood outside, unmoving. The boy's eyes seemed to burn with anger, but Sarah held her ground. She recited the incantations she had learned feeling a strange power surge through her. The children began to fade, their forms becoming less distinct. The vigilance. Sarah continued to live in her fortified home, always vigilant. The encounters with the black-eyed children had changed her, making her more aware of the unseen world around her. She joined forces with others who had faced similar threats, forming a community dedicated to protecting against supernatural entities. The black-eyed children might return, but Sarah was no longer afraid. She was ready. Conclusion, a new dawn. Sarah's life had been irrevocably altered by her encounters with the black-eyed children. What began as a terrifying ordeal had transformed her into a vigilant guardian of her home and community. The knowledge she gained and the strength she discovered within herself turned fear into resolve. Through her relentless research and the support of her neighbors, Sarah learned the importance of preparedness and unity. Her home, once a mere dwelling, became a bastion of protection, adorned with symbols of power and hope. The black-eyed children were no longer a mysterious threat, but a challenge she was equipped to face. I in the months that followed, Sarah's story spread, attracting others who had experienced similar hauntings. Together, they formed a network of support, sharing their experiences and strategies. This newfound community stood as a testament to human resilience and the power of collective strength against the unknown. Sarah's journey was a reminder that fear can be conquered and that the human spirit, when united with others, can withstand even the most malevolent forces. The black-eyed children may lurk in the shadows, but they would always find resistance in Sarah and her allies. And so, life continued. Sarah remained vigilant, always ready, but no longer afraid. Her story inspired others to face their fears and stand firm against the darkness. The encounters with the black-eyed children became a symbol of transformation, turning terror into empowerment and isolation into community. Sarah's house, once a place of fear, now stood as a beacon of courage and hope. The black-eyed children had not been defeated entirely, but they no longer held dominion over her life. In their place, a new dawn had risen, one filled with light, strength, and the unwavering belief that, together, they could face anything. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through the Black-Eyed Children. We hope you found this story as thrilling and inspiring as we did. If you enjoyed the story, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting and chilling tales. Your support means the world to us and helps us bring more stories to life. Stay tuned for more adventures, and remember, together, we can face anything.